let me reiterate what I didn't like about this. Uh, I don't like the fact that my corners came bumped and the grommets were kind of screwed up. It didn't really actually wreck the cells. Uh, the uh, box that it came in was really thin. Looked like a uh, retail box where maybe a hundred of these were in a, a bigger box. This had a smaller box, light duty box, just to protect them until they got put on a shelf in a retail store. The wiring is pretty straightforward. You're kind of forced to go at their geometry. But here's the weird part. So the uh, red is actually po uh, negative and black is positive, which is not usually the way it works. So I had to make a notation in case I ever connect this up. I don't want to burn out my uh, controller. So they reverse the polarity. I mean, you get a little, uh, it's weird, they didn't actually put the insulation all the way in in these waterproof connectors. So you get a little peek at the black and red. And so and it is, if you follow these wires, it's, you can see that the negative, negative wires that are labeled actually come in in the red. So that's just bizarre. Um, no explanation for that. This uh, controller, I mean, Every once in a while it kind of locks up if you're doing stuff, bouncing like connections around. So basically you just unplug the whole thing from both ends from the solar cells and the battery and reboot it. You get that problem. Other than that, I don't know, it seems to work. I have no issues. Topped off the one battery and top off this. I'm kind of going individual now with the batteries instead of charging them in parallel. Just doing something a little different. I think I understand this controller a little bit uh, better. So it'll be at 13.7 volts. You have all the bars all the way up. I get all five bars, and then that little arrow between the solar panel and the battery will be flashing. Then you're at a uh, what they call a flow charge, which is just a maintenance charge for the the battery because batteries over time do a very slow discharge. So so this battery is. Obviously, it's still taking a charge. It's not at the uh, the float charge or trickle charge, whatever you call it yet. It's uh, but when it gets to 13.7 volts, all five bars and an arrow's flashing between the solar panel icon and the battery icon. You're just basically at maintenance mode for the battery. It's all the way charged. So one more quick comment about flexible solar cells is they don't have nearly the service life of glass-based uh, silicon cells uh, because the backer is a plastic and it's even though it's flexible it will lose its flexibility it'll age uh, it's the backer is called a um, polyethylene terephthalate uh, chemical abbreviation or I guess maybe call it an acronym it's called PET PET plastic capital P capital E capital T but they, it will discolor it'll crack and the cracking will probably interfere with these small electrical connections between the cells in the panel uh, something to be aware of uh, I've heard a service life of less than a year to between 12 and 15 years typical service life so Kind of rolling the dice on surface life, and they don't like hot surfaces. So if you're in a hot, sunny climate down in Florida or wherever, I'm up in Minnesota. I still I wouldn't put these on an asphalt roof, probably directly. I'd put some sticks or something under so it could plant a little bit underneath, so the uh, plastic doesn't get super hot, age it quicker. Anyways, just be aware there. If you want something that's and deployed for 24 7 seven days a week these might not be the best choice uh, but they're very compact you can stow them in between cabinets forever I could probably get another 10 of these behind my refrigerator in my uh, cabinet here maybe more but anyways they're rated for 300 watts each
start. I'm guessing that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration. Ideal conditions even. Uh, we'll see. Then I'll go ahead and connect these up. I'll follow the instructions carefully. So I actually had to bring this the panels out in the sun to get this controller to turn on. It was a tried to do it like they suggested away from sunlight. Uh, just don't want to turn on without some actual juice running in it. So some level of current. So we'll see how long it takes to charge. It's approximately noon now. I got three bars at 13 volts. Um, so I'll maybe leave it out here in the sun, full sun for a couple hours. See if I get another bar. Oh, it's already going up to another bar. Woo! Got one more bar. Anyways, this is kind of a, a dry run. Obviously lots of funk with the wires just sitting loose. Everything's out in the element. I'll put these batteries in a plastic storage bin along with the, uh, the uh, converter and the uh, my uh, controller, voltage controller. So just to show that the uh, inverter can actually run something, it's, I'll turn it on. When I hit the power switch on my inverter, it should turn this fan on. This fan with these three batteries, it could run for hours. I, I'm not sure what the wattage requirement of this fan is, but it's going to be a whole lot less than a uh, medium size AC window unit. So we're talking hours of uh, run time. And again, I could probably run this continuously with just the uh, solar panels uh, if the sun's you know out in full sun. With my the panels I'll show you shortly here. So anyways I'll go ahead and turn the turn the switch on here. Again if you're working around car batteries just be very very careful. It'll actually start stuff on fire in like a millisecond if you got the wrong gauge wire or just you know misconnect things. Uh, never make your final connection at the battery away from the battery for the final connection because there's these battery can out gas and you can cause a spark they make actually the casing erupt and throw sulfuric acid all over so be aware of uh hazards wear safety glasses wear gloves uh have a plan if your battery blows up uh <laughs> so you can clean yourself off with some water and hurry so the moment of truth here, I'll uh, power up my AC window unit. It's probably as big as anything I'm going to ever connect to this uh, inverter. This is probably going to take even more power than a typical ref big refrigerator. Obviously, also it would run continuous duty to be effective. Unlike a refrigerator, it only runs for a few minutes every you know hour or two. So anyways, I'll go ahead and fan only, see if that turns on. <laughs> There's pieces floating around in there. That was the uh, something got in the fan blade. All right. Uh, okay, then we're gonna I'm gonna hit the medium low cool. Still running. Nothing's popped. Uh, <laughs> more stuff rattling around in the AC unit. It's been in storage for a while. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, Medium cool, see if I trigger a fuse here. Still running. I'm impressed. Then we're gonna go to high cool. Oh yeah, I'm feeling the cold air. Nice, I'm gonna go get a thermometer. I'll be back. So it looks like coldest is probably gonna get is about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this, uh, oh, all right. 53.9. So this air conditioning unit was purchased maybe 20 years ago. The Montgomery Wards is still a thing. The Montgomery Wards uh, air conditioner. Uh, so I don't know how worn it is. So it's probably not working at peak efficiency anymore. Anyways, I definitely a lot of cold air coming out of this thing in the middle of a hot sunny day. It's refreshing to sit in front of it. I'm getting a lot of cold breeze right off this thing. Oh, okay, it's still dropping, 53.0, So what are we at here, 52.1, 
51 point. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down. So it's been running about 20 minutes. Pretty cool air coming out of there. So that this part of the experiment is successful. Now the next part is hooking the solar panels up to this the battery so the batteries can charge. So here's the actual air temperature is 84.7 degrees. Subtract what was it, 53 degrees from the uh, so you get the actual like cooling, the amount of cooling temperature wise. So I'll just go ahead and check my wires, see how warm anything is. Uh, I mean, it's a really warm day, so uh, these wires are not overly warm. 